All right, Shalom, Shalom. Before I get started, I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekha Kodash, Laiwalam Yum. Double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect, the ones out there who are doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. I'm going to get right into it. Um, Right here, I got the precept pulled up in Syrac chapter 14. I'm going to start at verse 1. Um, read the verse 2. Uh, it says, Blessed is the man that have not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. So, the scriptures right now is saying that you're blessed, you know, if you, if you haven't slipped with your mouth. You're blessed when... when um, <coughs> You know, you 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 don't let your um your sins weigh you down, right? You're blessed when when you offend less. You know, uh, that's what the Lord wants us to do, man. He wants us to offend less, right? He wants us to identify what what upsets him and change that. You know, and um. That's what the prophets on the highways and the byways is there to do. You know, the prophets are there to let us know, you know, what's to come. The prophets are there to let us know what the Lord like and what the Lord dislike. Okay. And I'm like, I got a precept for that too as well. Um, you know, when, when you occupying in this truth, you, you have to watch what you say. You know, a lot of people, especially these other camps, they they take no regard in in what they say. You know, they don't. They just say things like they call on Jesus. They say the book of Paul. They say Paul was not authoritative. You know, they say the MOTB is sleeping with white women. You know, but. <laughs> They don't care about what they talking about, what they say out their mouth. But the Lord said right here, blesses the man that have not slipped with his mouth. According to Syrac chapter 14, <sighs> you know, making vows to the Lord that you can't keep. You know, they, that's slipping with your mouth, too, as well. You can't you can't do that, man. Hey, Amen. The scriptures let us know it's, it's better to not even make a vow or promise to the Lord than to make a promise to the Lord and don't keep it, you know, cause the Lord require what you, what you, uh, what you promised to him, you know, just like you require what the Lord promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, it says, and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. This is one of the reasons why, you know, I, I stay in the house, man. Like if I'm not around brothers, you know, or at work, I limit my activity with this world because, you know, I know I'm in the flesh and I know that there's temptation out there that could catch me up, you know, especially a beautiful woman. So I try to limit myself. Right. I'm not saying I just stay in the house and all. No, nah, I, I I try to have, you know, um, limited contact with the outside world if I don't got to go out there. You know, because there's a lot of wickedness out there. There's a lot of um, enticing temptation out there that'll catch you up. And then you'll what? You'll be constantly uh, pricked with a multitude of sins because you're constantly adding sin and sin. You know, constantly, you know, going off, seeking for excitement, seeking the next beautiful woman or whatever, man, you know. This world is very enticing, all right, to the flesh. But the spirit hates this place, man. You know, the spirit hates this place. So you bless when you are not pricked with the multitude of sins. You're blessed when you repent, you know, and you keep it moving. This is uh, Syrac chapter 14 and verse 2. It says, blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him and who has not fallen from the hope in the Lord. You see, you're blessed. You're blessed if you still pray. You're blessed if you still got hope in the Lord. You know, you're blessed if your conscience have not condemned you. 
You know, your sins like the like the um, show themselves and and a man of the Lord, you know, you you ashamed of that sin. But you can't be so ashamed of that sin to the point where it stops you from repenting. No, you're supposed to have that shame on you to repent, you know, to turn back to the Lord. You don't you don't let that shame choke you out this truth, man. You can't let that shame condemn you. You can't let that shame mess up your conscience to the point where now you out of this truth. Now you no longer have hope in the Lord, man. You know, and it's easier said than done, but we got to do it. Yeah, this flesh, this flesh is weak, man, and it, it does things that you wouldn't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like you, certain times, certain. How can I say this? <sighs> certain things you do in the flesh, you don't want to do, right? And then some of the things that you want to do in the spirit, you don't do. Like our brother Paul said, man. <sighs> that's that's the battle of, you know. Being in this flesh. Okay, yeah, you want to do something. You want to go full in and not sin. That's the goal. But then when you fall short, what you going to do about it? Are you going to say, woe is me? Are you going, you know, are you going to forget about the Lord? Will you stop having hope in the Lord? These are all questions that you really got to ask yourself, man. You really got to ask yourself this, these questions, man, to see if you're in, this, in the faith or not. Do you still have hope in the Lord? You know? Because if you do, you're blessed. You know? You're blessed if you have not fallen from the, your hope in the Lord, man. That's why it's very important to listen to the prophets, listen to the men of the Lord that are, that are out here, man. You know? Let me get this precept real quick because the, the prophets have always been here to let us know, you know what I'm saying, what the Lord like, what the Lord dislike, the prophecies. This is Jeremiah 44 and 4. It says, How be it I sent unto you all my service to prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable, abominable thing that I hate. You see? So the prophet's telling you the things that the Lord hate, which is sin. The Lord hates sin. You know, the Lord hates when you when you go against his word. You know, but the Lord is also merciful. If he ain't take you out this earth yet, if you still got oxygen in your lungs, then you still have hope. You still have a chance to to repent. You don't have to remain in the position of 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 self loathing. You don't have to remain in a position of condemning yourself. The Lord has given us this magnificent gift, which is Yahawashai, right? To utilize the blood of Yahawashai in order to get, get away from these sins, man. And that's a beautiful thing. Utilize Yahawashai, man. Utilize the prophets. The prophets are telling you what the Lord disliked. This is Jeremiah 44 and 5. It says, but they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. You see, this is two thirds of our people. You know, you got higher level idolatrous priests. Do you got lower level idolatrous priests? If you celebrate your birthday, Christmas, all that, you are, you are idolatrous priests. You worshiping Nimrod and Molech and Baal, you know. When you celebrate those things, hey, man, putting up a Christmas tree, putting up Halloween decorations, that, those are all rituals, man. You know, and you don't want to be caught up in that. Celebrating your own birthday. If you look um, in the uh, the Satanist Bible, you know, that's the if I'm not mistaken, that's the highest, highest uh, day. That's known, you know what I'm saying, in that in their religion, as far as like the highest holiday, which is your birthday, self-worship. <laughs> you know? So, hey man, the Lord sent his prophets to tell you what he hate, what he dislike. And and really the prophets are there to to show you what the Lord you know likes. So that way you can uh do what the Lord like and and not fall, you know, 
Not fall from the hope that you have in him. Because this flesh will cause you to do that if you're not paying attention. If you're not repenting. If you're not praying to the Lord. Before you know it, this world will choke you out. You don't want that, man. I don't want that. And like the scripture says, he that watereth, watereth himself. So this is for me as well, man. I don't want that. I don't want the Lord to come and take, you know what I'm saying, the spirit away from me. So that means what? I got to remain diligent. And those who think the same way, you got to remain diligent. You can't be a stiff neck, hard headed ass two third, man. You know, you got to repent. This is Jeremiah 44 and 6 says, Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. You see, at this day, till this day, we're still wasted. We're still desolate, our people as a, as a whole, you know, but the Lord is waking up the elect all, all across the four corners of the earth, man. That's how you know the end is, is, is very near. Our Lord said, what? Well, repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand over in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, man. All right, the scripture says in Luke 13, repent or you shall all likewise perish. So if you're not repenting out here, no matter how much you know, no matter how, you know what I'm saying, how you think about yourself, you're going to die if you don't repent, man. And that's just cut and dry, man. So hopefully this was edifying, you know. I'm not going to draw it out. I believe the point was made. Um, let me see if I got another precept on my. Uh, let me see. Don't let your conscience condemn you. Repent and keep it moving. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse... Uh, Uh, start at verse uh, 9. It says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. How is the Lord doing that? The Lord is doing that through Yahweh Shai. You can't go to the Father without going through the Son. The Father don't look at you unless you went through the Son. You see? Continuing on, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's what we got to ask the Lord on a consistent constant basis right because this 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 mind that we have in our head is desperately wicked the scripture says in jeremiah chapter 17 start at verse 9 you know i believe the scriptures let us know man that the mind is desperately wicked who can know it hey the lord know the thoughts though right he tries the the, the mind of men and he give to them according to their ways, like the scripture says, you know. So we got to constantly ask the Lord to create in us a clean mind where we're never going off, you know. And and eventually that's going to happen when we get those new bodies, man. You know, we're going to we're going to be able to um, uh, last forever, man. All right. And this is a future prophecy. You know, the, the Lord is going to give us a new mind. The Lord is going to create a creating us a clean mind. Right, he's gonna he's he's gonna renew this body. Right, he's gonna give us a right spirit within us. It's gonna happen with those uh with those new bodies, man. With that uh new covenant, you know, it says verse eleven: Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. This is what you gotta ask daily, over and over and over again, because it's so easy to get caught up in the flesh. And now you 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 losing hope in the Lord. It's so easy, man. This is Psalms 51 and verse 12. It says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And this is what every last man, woman, and child of the Lord is asking. To keep us in the spirit. Lord, what number part of that number? To allow me to keep repenting. No matter what comes upon me in this life, keep me grounded. Keep me in the spirit to the best possible way. In the best possible way, should I say. You know, so, hey, Shalom, Yasharala. Hey, stay enduring, stay strong, stay repentant. Don't let your conscience condemn you. Don't, don't let your sins cover you. Repent from them and keep it moving. 
Always keep your hope in the Lord. Shalom. I'll show you on to the next one.